In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to import 3D Action VFX assets into these applications. We will learn how to apply UDIM textures in all of these render engines. Feel free to jump ahead in the video to the software and render engine that applies to you. Hi, I'm Connor with Action VFX, and I'll be your instructor for today. Let's jump right on in. In some of our models, you'll see that textures come as UDIMs. UDIMs are U-dimensional images and is a standardized method for organizing and naming texture tiles in different applications to efficiently handle large texture sets for high resolution assets. Traditionally, individual texture maps would be named separately, but UDIMs are particularly useful for high resolution assets where a single texture may not provide enough detail. Each UDIM tile can have its own high resolution texture, allowing for intricate details without relying on massive single texture maps. But first, let's talk about what kind of assets you'll be receiving and what might work best for you. Different 3D model asset types serve various purposes and are compatible with different softwares and workflows. Let's explore the difference between .obj and .fbx. OBJ is developed by Wavefront Technologies and it's a simple and widely used support format. OBJ files import as static 3D models and are ideal for basic geometry and it doesn't support animations or complex materials. FBX, however, is developed by Autodesk and is a versatile format used for exchanging 3D assets between various software applications. It is suitable for both static and animated models, supporting textures, materials, lights, and even cameras. Let's jump into Blender and import our first model. Let's first import a static model like an OBJ or an FBX file. Navigate to File, Import, and your Asset Type. For us, we'll select an FBX and go from there. Once your model is imported, we can select the model and go to the Material Properties tab on the right sidebar. Since this is an FBX, it will import with some materials already attached to it. We can select Body, and then go to our Shading Workspace for ease of use. This will automatically place us in the Viewport Shading view. Be mindful that viewport shading is a real-time render engine and produces different results in lighting. If we are importing a UDIM texture map, we will want to select 1001 map and drag and drop this into our node editor and connect it to our principled BSDF. Change the tiling mode in the dropdown from single image to UDIM. Do this for all your maps that you are importing, your diffuse, roughness, normal, and your displacement. Using a principled BSDF, we will connect the diffuse, roughness, normal, and displacement textures to the appropriate inputs. We can always make further tweaks in the node editor if we're trying to achieve a specific result, but that's a tutorial for another time. In Maya, we can import a static 3D model by going to File, Import, and selecting your asset type. Under Window and Rendering Editor, select Hypershade. Now let's create a standard shader by going to Create, Arnold, Surface, and AI Standard Surface. In the Hypershade Editor, right click on the AI Standard Surface Shader and click on Assign Material to Selection. This will apply the Arnold Standard Surface Shader to your model that you have selected in your viewport. Now let's import our texture maps and apply them to this material. Select the base color attribute and go to File. Now select the icon next to image name and locate and load your UDIM texture. Again, we will only need to select the 1001 image for each of the maps to import the UDIM. Change the UV tiling mode to UDIM. This will automatically search for UDIM textures in that directory. Now select the Generate Preview button. Do this for your diffuse, roughness, normal, and your displacement. Finally, we can preview our results by rendering it out. Follow the same importing instructions from the previous section, File, Import, and selecting your asset type. Let's go to the Hypershade Editor under Windows, Rendering Editors, and Hypershade. Let's create a standard shader for V-Ray by going to Create, V-Ray, V-Ray MTL. In the Hypershade Editor, find the Diffuse attribute and select the Input slot. Go to File. Now select the icon next to Image Name and locate and load your UDIM texture. Again, we will only need to select the 1001 image for each of the maps to import the UDIM. 
Change the UV tiling mode to UDIM. This will automatically search for UDIM textures in that directory. Now select the Generate Preview button. Do this for your diffuse, roughness, normal, and your displacement. Right click on the V-Ray MTL shader and select Assign Material to Selection to apply this material to your 3D model. Finally, make sure to set the Render Using option to V-Ray under Windows, Rendering Editors, and Render Settings. Let's move over to Cinema 4D and run through the process of importing our model there. Under File, select Merge. You can select your 3D model asset type. We will import as an FBX. Now under Window, select Material Manager. This will show you the materials that were created by the FBX. We'll just remove these and add our own in. Create, Redshift, and then your Redshift standard material. We can go to our Outliner and select all of our objects, and then go to our Redshift material, right click, and hit Apply. Double click on the Redshift material to open its settings. In the Material Editor, find the appropriate channels. Click on the small arrow next to the channel and choose Redshift, Texture, Image Texture. We will then load each of our maps individually. Drag the out color to the blue box and select the image map type for each of your textures. These will not load as UDIM though by default, and we will need to replace the number 1001 in the texture name in our path to bracket UDIM bracket. This will update once we close and refresh the renderer. Repeat this step for all of your maps. In Cinema 4D Octane, we will repeat the same steps as the previous section for importing our 3D model by going to File and then Merge. We will select our asset type. Now under Window, select Material Manager. This will show you the materials that were created by the FBX. We'll just remove these and add our own in. Click on Create, Extensions, C4D Octane. This will serve as the base material for applying our textures. We can then again select our helicopter inside of our outliner, and then right click on the Octane material and hit Apply. Double click on the Octane material to open its settings. Add an Octane Image Tile node, and load your texture maps by clicking on the node and then selecting the image file. Then select 1001 from your UDIM materials. This will not load as a UDIM initially. We will need to add our grid size in to match the grid size of our UDIM texture. This will be the number of images from your texture maps. We have five grids on this Blackhawk, so we will make this five by one. Then hit Find Pattern and Update Reload. Then we can drag the outputs of these images into the appropriate inputs on our material. Now in Unreal Engine, we will need to enable UDIM support project settings and search for virtual textures. We will click the enable button on this and restart our Unreal Engine. This will take a moment as it has to reload all of the shaders. Now navigate to your content browser, right click on an empty space and choose import. Select your 3D model file asset. We can drag and drop our textures into the content browser, and we will notice that it has a VT in the bottom right-hand corner. 
Now we know that the virtual textures worked and these are loaded as UDIM textures. Then in your content browser, navigate to your materials folder. Double click on your material to open in the material editor. Add texture notes for all your maps that you will be inserting. Then connect the output of the textures to the diffuse, roughness, normal, and displacement inputs on the material. If you're looking for 3D models like the one we used in this tutorial, you can find more at our website, actionvfx.com. We provide a library of high quality 3D assets that you can purchase right now and use in any and all of your productions. We also have an ever growing library of 2D assets to help spruce up your compositing shots as well as your 3D scenes. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to watch some more amazing tutorials as well as uses of 2D and 3D assets in video games and movies. If you want to see a specific tutorial, make sure to comment below and I'll see you next time.